Good morning. Oh, that was pretty puny, wasn't it? <laughs> I bet we can do better than that. Okay, well, get ready. Here we go. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. I need to feel a little energy. Thank you. Hey, we have just a few announcements before we begin our service today. Uh, this month, we're collecting peanut butter. Don't forget, peanut butter. And I'm excited about this. As of last Friday, we had 220 jars of peanut butter. So that is great. And then I counted at least 20 more uh, come in this morning. So we are close to 300. Do you think we can make it? We have one doubter up here. <laughs> 204 we need. That means we need about 50 or 60 more jars. So let's go for it. What do you say? Let's do it. Because it just, it just kills me. And we come up 298. <laughs> you know, just too short. So please bring some peanut butter next week and let's, um, let's beat, that, beat that goal of 300. Um, I keep reading in the paper surveys that are being done, and there's still a lot of people out there coming up short on meals during the week. Uh, they've got jobs, but they're underemployed. It's not enough to make it through. And they do have meals where they're left kind of empty. So we're fulfilling a very important need. So I'm proud of our church for stepping forward in all of this. And um, you should have a pew pad in your pew. If you could please um, fill that out, pass it on down. If you don't know who the person is next to you, really, it's okay to peek. Check out their name and talk to them right after the service. And... Um, let me see, we have some visitors with us. I've been practicing on this. Mike, cha-chow, cha-cho. 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 You know, I was working hard not to say cha-cha. <laughs> cha-cho. <laughs> so, let's just say Mike. <laughs> Mike, we're glad to have you in worship here. <laughs> Mike's a good friend of Bill and Yvonne Finnegan, who are uh, maybe surviving their 60th anniversary. It's been a long week, a lot of celebrations, so uh, very good to have this celebration happening. And um, Frank and Joyce Embry. There you are, hiding back. Hey, we're glad to have you too. <laughs> and I want to welcome Jim and Linda Thompson back. So I know you've been doing travelings up looking at the tornadoes up in Oklahoma and Kansas, and glad to have you back safe and sound. <laughs> and um, uh, Jordan, I have Jordan, is this, this Jordan? <laughs> you just want to be recognized, you've been here before, but Jordan, we're glad you're here. <laughs> uh, good to have you, Jordan. And uh, I want to welcome everyone, our snowbirds are gradually coming back. Arlen Lamero, glad to have you all back. You've been out traveling too, so glad to have you here. And um, let me see, I have something special I want to share. Um, we have a lot of good-hearted people that do great things for our church, and they need to be recognized when that happens. And um, in our custodial apartment department, we had a woman that stepped forward and said, tell you what, I'll just take that over for a while. And brought everything back up to par. Brought, it looks great. We've just hired a new custodian. Her name is Barbie Klau Klarkowski. Just call her the Claw when you see her, the Claw. And uh, this woman is filled with energy. Don't adjust your glasses when you see her walking. She really does vibrate. She's got that much energy in her. She's excited and will start at the beginning of September. Uh, but Julie Carricker stepped in and filled that gap for us. Julie, where are you? Where'd Julie go? Is she cleaning somewhere, I bet? Is that... <laughs> there we go. Julie, come on down. <laughs> Julie, thank you. You have helped our church so much by filling in that gap. We have a, want you to have a dinner on us at P.F. Chang. And I think it's enough there. You can take two people. You can take your husband, your pastor, or... <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. Julie, thank you. <laughs> well, we do appreciate all the good work that happens during, in our church. Are there any other announcements? I think I've got things covered. Take a moment, will you? Just breathe. Just sort out your head. Get those distractions out of your mind. We've come here to church, let's be very clear about this, to worship God, to recognize His presence with us. 
That's a great goal. And God is very pleased when his people come to seek that presence in their life. Let's prepare ourselves. Just take a moment, listen to the music that Pat will be playing, and appreciate the opportunity we have for fellowship with our Lord. Good morning. morning. Now, if the humidity would go away, it would be perfect outside. Will all those who are able please stand for the call to worship? Let us love one another, for love comes from God. God shows his love by sending his only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and then sent his son as a sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Please pray with me. O God of the still, small voice, quiet our inner spirit. Help us to focus upon you and you alone to hear your voice within. There are so many other voices demanding our attention, but we cannot attend to them without you. Be still and know that I am God. You say to us as you said to Elijah. May your voice speak through us. In weakness be our strength. In poverty be our wealth. In depression be our joy. In apathy be our love. We cannot sing love song, O Lord, unless it be your voice singing in us. Take this heart and with this mouth, make your praise and thanksgiving a reality here and now. Because of and in the name of our Messiah, Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to turn it over to Kay Minor. She'll lead us in our hymn of praise.
Thank you. Today we're continuing through the Sermon on the Mount. They're found in the Gospel of Matthew. And we come to that part of the Sermon on the Mount that's very interesting. It's the part that says, do not judge lest you be judged. I found in my 37 years of ministry experience, that's the one verse that everybody claims that everybody else is guilty of, but not themselves. Everybody's passing judgment over me, but I'm not guilty of doing that. Of course not. It's the most unnecessary verse in the Bible, if you listen to what everybody has to say. But it's about passing judgment. It's about being critical. How many of you love to have people criticize you? Isn't that just a great feeling? Just can't wait to get to church and have people criticize me. It's a terrible thing. It trips us up. It does make hard, life hard. It's very discouraging. I came upon a very kind of a funny poem. I thought it has a great point to it. One of those is kind of like a parable. Can I share this with you? There was a little seed lay on the ground and soon it began to sprout. Now, which of all the flowers around it mused, shall I come out? The lily's face is fair and proud, yeah, but just a trifle cold for me. The rose, I think, is rather loud, and then its fashion is actually kind of old. The violet is all very well, but not a flower that I choose nor yet the Canterbury Bell. I never cared for blues. So it criticized each flower, this supercilious seed, until it woke one summer hour to find itself a weed. I <laughs> <laughs> love the point of that. If we find ourselves criticizing, looking at everybody else, constantly criticizing, we're not growing, we're not developing, we weaken ourselves, we flatten ourselves out to become very boring people in this world. When Jesus reaches out to our hearts, he's reaching out to bring us life, to make us everything we were meant to be, to bring us fully human, fully alive. And we do that not by looking at each other to point out their faults and how we might feel superior, consequently, but we do that by looking at Jesus himself. Here's the one that loves us, the one that cares for us, the one that has power of salvation, forgiveness, the one that has power of healing to make us whole, to take our fragmented souls and bring them united together, that we can become all that God calls us to be. And we get there by focusing upon Jesus, looking at him. When we take these emblems this morning, this bread and this cup, remember, they represent Jesus, our Lord our Savior, he's the one that has provided for us. Our communion hymn is Break Thou the Bread of Life. As we sing this hymn, let's prepare to meet with our Savior, Jesus.
as Jesus met with his disciples in the upper room, I always try to picture what it had been like to sitting at that table and just seeing his expression, his love, his care. As he was there, he took the bread that was at the table and he broke it before his disciples. And he teaches us that this broken loaf represents his own body that is broken on our behalf there at the cross of Calvary. And Jesus took a cup of the fruit of the vine and he gives thanks for it. And he teaches us this cup represents his own blood that he has shed there upon the cross of Calvary. Jesus gives his life that we might have life. This is the only way that we might find forgiveness, salvation, to enter into the family of God without fear, without anxiety, but confident hearts knowing that we are loved by our Lord. Let us pray. We give thanks, Lord, for your presence. As we break the bread and drink the cup, we remember the power you have transformed to transform lives through Jesus Christ. Help us to have the faith to give up our old, selfish, self-righteous ways of life and to live in the power of new life that only you can give. In Jesus' name, amen.
appreciate quiet moments like that with our Lord. You know, I look around the, the news, get on the internet, check headlines, and see what's happening in America and the rest of the world. I get the impression that the world's not working right. Have you ever gotten that impression that maybe it's broke? <laughs> maybe that's why our Lord God called us as Christian people, part of his people, to step up because the world needs us. The world needs that message of healing and reconciliation. We collect our offering. It's all part of that call that we're stepping forward, we're stepping up to make that message of love understood, to make it very credible to a world that needs to know there's another way to live. Let's collect our offering with great faith this morning, believing that God's got a wondrous plan to bring healing to our world. Father in heaven, we indeed thank you for these gifts. As Pat played, see your eye is on the sparrow, and you know we know you watch us, each and every one of us, as though we were the only ones that you cared for. Thank you for these gifts that have been brought by these people. May they be used in good fashion. May they be used to further your word in this community. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. time of prayer. Very important time. Time we just spend with our Lord and lifting up to him the various needs we have with ourselves and our church community as well. Uh, we have the carnation out this morning in memory of my Marie Lyman. You'll find a little uh, blurb in the bulletin that explains a little bit about her. Uh, Marie hasn't been in worship with us for a little while, but she was very active for a while. And uh, she passed away August 15th and um, I want to re remember her and her family. Also, uh, B.G. Harrington had her surgery, back surgery, and um, I was ready to go see her on Friday, just hoping she'd be okay, and she's home, and uh, doing fine, getting around, and um, doing great, so um, I told her we were just going to stop praying for her, and she said, oh, no, please don't do that. I go, you got it, we'll keep praying, uh, but B.G.'s doing well, but let's do keep praying with her. Uh, if you ever had back surgery, there's all kinds of surprises that can still happen, so Definitely, please keep praying for BG. And um, Harry Carlson has um, been Banner Hospital, and they moved him to Banner, excuse me, Boswell Rehab. 
and uh, he's there, maybe there for a while. And um, Harry's got a, a few issues we're very concerned about. Uh, they think that he's uh, picked up Mercer again. And this would be the, I think it's the third time that he's had that, just never really got over it. Um, so we're very concerned for Harry and his wife, Joan, if you would remember them in your prayers. And um, June, if I might just share a good uh, prayer answer you have. Uh, last Sunday, June told me that they found a spot on her lung. And I hate that when they don't give you any detail. Well, there's a spot there. We'll talk to you later. And so I just started praying. I know a lot of other people started praying. And then, um, then this week I got a phone call and just the most brightest, beautiful voice and saying, Pastor, guess what? <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> they just said it's an old scar. It's okay. So I'm going to count that as a blessing. I'll even count it as a miracle, June, that God is good to you. Um, so we've got to be thankful for those things when they come up. So we are indeed thankful for our Lord and what he does for us. Let's just take a moment. Let's just be still. Let's just be quiet and just have time where we talk to God. I think as we quiet down our soul, quiet down our thoughts, I think it's then that God has a chance to say something to us when we're listening. Let's just be still before God. Most holy Lord, it is wonderful just to be still before you, not have to hurry, not have to do anything in particular, but just to be still for you. I pray we can take advantage of these opportunities throughout the week to be still, and just be quiet, and to give you a chance to say something to us. Father, we hurry along so quickly, I, I fear that we just crowd you out altogether. Forgive us of those times and teach us to be attentive and to be aware, and to realize the great need we have for you. In you is wisdom. In you we find our healing. We find our courage. We find our direction. We find a new way to live. We find a better alternative that this world is, is just not following through with, Lord. It never could fulfill the deeper desires of our life. But, Lord, you can, and only you, teach us to reach out to you often, steadily, always expecting good things from your hand and your Holy Spirit to guide us. We lift up to you, O oh Lord, our, our prayer concerns, and I pray you'd be with the family of Marie Lyman and give them a confidence in their heart, Lord, that Marie is your daughter and she's in your hands and she's okay. Be with this family. We rejoice with B.G. Arrington and just to be home and so far so good, Lord, to be free of her pain and what a blessing that is. And may she freely share her joy with, with many, we thank you for being with June Lewis, too, and, and just bring her through that time of uncertainty, and faith has prevailed. Thank you. We pray you be with Harry Carlson and in Boswell uh, Rehab, and, and Father, it's just a very tough challenge for him, Lord, in dealing with this viral infection, but Father, come to him. Even this moment, bring peace to his mind, bring peace to his soul, where he can just be at rest, knowing that you're providing and that you'll never let go of him, oh God. But your presence is a mainstay for him. Let your presence be obvious in his room. That everyone knows that this is a special man because he belongs to you and your love is upon him. Make your presence known. And Father, many other concerns that we have, we lift them to you. The personal needs we have that have been shared with you. Lord, hear the prayers of your people. Step into the lives of people that need to know more of you. Be in the homes, be in the rooms of those that are, are suffering right now, those that are recovering from illness, those that are enduring illness, those that have challenges that have befallen them. Come to them. Give them a fresh spirit, new strength, 
And may they know that that strength is your Holy Spirit coming upon them. Lord, how we need a greater touch of you, a greater familiarity of, of your presence and of your kindness. Lord, truly you are wonderful, truly amazing. And to lift our praise and worship to you, it benefits us, O oh Lord. It benefits our soul to worship you in all of your grandeur. Truly, you are holy and righteous over all of this universe. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.